All right, all right, settle in, you ingrates. This will be the last one. Stop your belly aching. Hello, newly initiated lantern keepers. In return for the training you are about to receive in refining your art and strengthening your will, the Lantern Society demands that you obey by our strictures and perform your duties. We have already covered the strictures in your initiation into the Society, so now we shall discuss the primary duties of a Lantern Keeper. The first duty is the constant work of your refinement, knowledge, and the ability to resist darkness. This is a duty that you shall never falter in. Humanity simply cannot afford for you to fall. The second duty is what we have come to call the walkabout. The aboriginals of Australia created this term, and they use it to mean the sort of semi-nomadic existence they led in the outback. Wandering for a while, staying put for a short time to plant, and then wandering to the next patch. Our travels in the dark ocean are much alike this. We use, it to, we use the term walkabout to denote that the journeys we make in the dark ocean, and that the return that we must always make to the rock. You must always return to the rock. There are no exceptions to this duty. The reasons for your presence on the rock are as follows. First, we need as many lantern keepers here on the rock as possible to police its bars, fill the cracks in the wall, and patrol the wall as watchmen. Second, we need to gather all the intelligence you have gathered while on walkabout for the archives. Without this knowledge from your dark diaries, we simply cannot predict the aims of the dark beings attempting to influence or enter our rock. Further, the longer you remain upon the broken rock, or in an estuary, the greater the chances that you shall become corrupted and fall. Our protections cannot protect us forever, for our bodies and minds are composed of slower vibrating murk than those of the beings that live in the dark ocean. Third, the more lantern keepers we have at our disposal to teach, train, and foster others, the stronger the society and its defense of humanity will become. When on walkabout, you must remember that you and your fellow lantern keepers are the emissaries of the human race. When gathering knowledge from another rock or estuary, you may have to entreat with otherworldly beings. Take care in what you promise, and take care in what services you render. Back during the Great War, that's World War I for you youngsters, a group of lantern keepers foolhardily chose expediency over ethical correctness. And as a result, they got the entire society involved in a war between two fairy princes seeking to abduct and force nearly 100,000 human women to bear their children. Needless to say, the society dealt most severely with those keepers, and their names have been struck from the records. When on walkabout, you may also be tempted to bring back something from another rock or estuary. Under no circumstances must you bring back anything other than knowledge. In the 70s, a keeper brought back what she thought was a harmless mark upon her person, those tattoos that are so fashionable amongst you younger generations. But the mark was not composed of simply ink, but instead of the protoplasmic infection of an alien species that spread by physical contact. We had to incinerate her, her family, and some of her friends to contain the infection. When on walkabout, you must obey the orders of the scout. The scout is the lantern keeper who has the most experience navigating the dark ocean. When on assignment to a rock or an estuary, you must obey the orders of the diplomat. The diplomat is the lantern keeper with the most knowledge or experience of that rock or estuary. This would seem to be an apparent and sensible operating instruction, but we state it formally here to avoid disagreements during a walkabout. Finally, it is important you record everything from a walkabout, and to that end we encourage the use of your dark diaries, which record all of which you are aware. Every scrap of knowledge we can find and collate helps us to make sense of the murk and the dark ocean, if only for a short time before it alters. Which brings us to cataloging. Not only when you return to the rock, but while you are upon it, we require records of your lives, your experiences, your every thought. It may not seem important, but the reason for this duty is found in the scraps of how actual cult lore is gained. I'm sure when you were first interested in the occult, you plumbed about the New Age section of the bookstore and thumbed through all those Wiccan 101 guides, yes? Or perhaps you read darker stuff, like Crowley and D and Francis Bacon? Did you never wonder why, for all their supposed authority, they could never produce any real manifestation of art? Real art comes from moments of awakening. A human mind vibrates spontaneously and unpredictably at the correct frequency for just a moment and the murk alters. 
Thus, you find actual scraps and tidbits of magic, not in grimoires, but in diaries, in plays, in poetry, and the painting and sculptures of the great artists. You find it in internet blogs and MySpace pages, God save us all, and in the great works of art and literature of the entire world. If you want to find real magic, don't walk down to the local occult bookstore or the local coven for instruction. Go to a museum. Thus, anything you produce, anything you write, sing, dance, may in fact be a manifestation of a higher vibratory state, and as such we need to catalog it. Travels to strange places or a backyard barbecue? Catalog it. Concert of a skilled bluesman? Or attending a factory candy pop band? Catalog it. Your mother gives you an old family recipe? Catalog it. I know it is tedious and that most of us do not catalog as thoroughly and fully as we should, and is this reason the society is not more advanced in its art than it currently is. In cataloging, you must be a better example than some of your seniors have been before you. Which brings us to fostering. Once you attain the grade of Lantern Keeper 3, you will be assigned a Lantern Keeper Grade 1 to foster. Those of you exceptionally skilled in tutelage may also be given three or four Lantern Keepers to help guide. Before you make master and Padawan jokes, this is not that kind of relationship. If you lacked the ability to control yourself, you would not already be here. But your guru, the lantern keeper that fosters you, is someone to whom you should listen to and go to for advice. You are not required to obey them, but failure to listen to their advice can prove costly. Many of your gurus have well over two decades of dealing with the dark ocean and dark beings. Their experience and wisdom is a great resource to you. Further. As a guru, it is your responsibility to report any infractions or concerns you may have about your fosterlings to the society. In this way, we have managed to correct many errors and at times excise malignancies from the society. This completes the lectures of the society. We welcome you new lantern keepers to the holy flame, to your society, and to your duties. I go forth and carry the holy fire, and do not falter.